today's episode, we're going to review three events. One is from this past 21st of May, which is Circle 6 and No Peace Underground collaborating together in first time for Circle 6 being in Orlando 4. It's not what you think. We also got GCW's latest event, Maniac, that also took place on the 21st of May. And we cannot forget AEW Dark Elevation. And we got a couple of news updates that we really want to share with everyone. So, get ready for another episode of the We Did Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay Right here. So let's begin with Circle Six and No Peace Underground collaborating with It's Not What You Think. This took place on the 21st of May in Orlando, Florida. Now, opening match, we had Jody Threat taking on Kelsey Reagan. Now, this was a very interesting match because, you know, as you know, Jody Threat has been with many promotions back and forth with various. And, of course, Kel Kelsey Reagan made um, No Peace on the Ground her own. So, basically, she's, like, defending her territory. That is pretty much how storytelling tells. But, however, when it comes to Jody Threat, you know she's always ready for a match, ready for an uphill battle. And, of course, she was the one who picked up the victory by taking down Kelsey with her finisher. One, two, three. It's over. Jody Threat wins the match. Next up, we had a Ohio native who's part who is familiarized with Circle Six. We got Jake Chris taking on um, Anthony Henry. Now, we all know Anthony Henry. He is a beast when it comes to wrestling. He's one of half of the workhorsemen. That, to me, is no secret. But when it comes to Jay Chris, you know how he is a mastermind in certain aspects. I think it's, it, it was a pretty good match. I would have assumed because, you know, Anthony Henry, he is one of the hard-hitting wrestlers I've watched. Even when he was with WWE and with a different name, I thought so too. But nope, it did not. But I'm glad that I was wrong because, you know, Jay Chris, who is the veteran in this whole uh, match, picked up the victory. One, two, three. It's over with the pinfall. Now, this next match, I'm not familiarized with these two guys. With the, the um, We have DMC versus uh, Wheezy T. I don't know who these guys are, but um, I have to say I was impressed by both these individuals. I mean, like I said, I don't even know them, but I, um, DMC was really impressive. And so is Wheezy T, but it was DMC who picked up the uh, the victory on this match with the pinfall. One, two, three, it's done. Now, here's the most bizarre match I've ever heard. Now, let's take back with Terrible Lie that took place with Circle Six. If you remember, Eddie only was on ringside for Ricky Shane Taylor. I mean, Rick, Ricky Shane Page, or as we call him, RSP. As you know, Scarlett Bardot, Killer Cross's girlfriend, fiance, embarrassed him by putting pulling down his tights. Eddie decided to complain like a little bitch, knowing that he didn't that he did not like what happened to him. And now he's saying that he's starting this thing called Eddie's OnlyFans Gotten a Match. You are probably saying, really? Is he being for real? Yeah. So he challenged every woman who's on, on who showed up to challenge him. And they all fell like dominoes. There's Lexi Gomez, Sadie Suicide, and Catalina Perez. 
I mean, there was a moment where with Sadie suicide, she made out with uh, with Eddie only, and he had a boner, and everybody were making fun of him. But the one person I thought he would de definitely would take him down was Chelsea Durden, uh, Durden, but no. I don't know how Eddie only don't, he's saying he's going to did it, but he won all his matches in the gauntlet, and now he's going to launch his OnlyFans. I'm like, oh, what is he going to do, huh? I don't know, but someone better shut him up. Now, our next match is a hardcore match. We have Otis Coger, acting as Coger's older brother, taking on Kevin uh, Giza. I have to say this match was amazing. You see, I did not anticipate a whole lot with. Now, I have seen Kevin Giza with IWA Deep's um, Mid-South before because that particular organization is involved in death matches. I was like so impressed that he was able to pick up, but he was able to use the Luby lights under his favor to win the match. And I thought, wow, he outsmarted him this way, you know, because the way it is, Otis, he's a bit more of a nutcase, you know, but for Kevin to use the light, the light tubes on this one, it helped him win the match. Next up, we have a very interesting match. It's a no disqualification, and this is for a future shot of the uh, No Peace Underground Championship that's currently being held by Acticus Coger. We have the young stud members of 440, Bobby Beverly and Eric, Eric Ryan, taking on Paro. Now, from here's what's going on. Paro was the previous champion before Acticus Coger, so... Perro would do anything in his power to get that title back. But however, he has to get through 440 members. And it's like bizarre. Everything would have gone in his favor if it wasn't for Acticus, who made sure that Beverly and um, Ryan kept up, uh, won the match. So this is going to be a hard hitting thing. But basically, Perro lost his opportunity to get another shot. But I wouldn't. Um, Stop them from there because if I was Paro, I would definitely come back for more until something uh, would change. Next up, we got an Extremes Rules match with legendary former WWE superstar Gangrel taking on legend in the deathmatch world Masada. Now, you know, this is going to be one crazy match when it comes to blood and guts, all that. But the one thing I did not anticipate. Is Masada using a low blow? I did not expect that coming from him because he is a bit of a, of a, how do I say, um, not a loose cannon. That he would have went the, his way by, you know, using extreme rules, but he didn't. So he walked out in that type of favor. So, yeah. Now, our next match, we have RSP Ricky Shane Page taking on the Samoan Werewolf. Jacob Fatu. Now, Fatu, you know this is crazy. It's nuts. And of course, RSP would do everything to try to win this match, but it, it did not help him in any way. But we all know that Fatu, he is dangerous. He's crazy. We know that he would definitely not give up that easily. You know, his reputation preceded him. And of course, it was that moonsault off the top rope that allowed him to win for a second, for another time. Now, Ricky is on the losing streak in Sir. Six. Now our main event. This is for the the No Peace Underground Championship, with the return of Zachary Wemps, formerly known as Nash Carter, taking on Acticus Coger. Now this match was unbelievably good. I have to said it was great. I think the problem I had is this. Sure, Zachary wins. We can talk about the aggregation. Uh, Allegations he had previously, but man, he did pretty good as a singles competitor. I'm not gonna lie about that because the thing is this: we may not criticize him, but we may view him as a tag team specialist. But we never give him credit, in my opinion, as a singles competitor. I remember he was involved in a death match and he went beyond what he could. People said he can't do it, and he pulled it off. But however, the way he did with this match with Atticus Coger, it was great. But Atticus Coger, who has been proven time and time why he is the the best of today's era in death matches, he 
pulled off the brain hemorrhage on him, and one, two, three, he retained the title. But I have to say, Zachary Wentz did a pretty good job as a singles competitor, and I have to say, there's no shame of what he's as of what he's done. But I have to say, I would like to see what he can do now as a singles competitor. But as for the allegations he's saying, I have to say, if what he said was true, what took place with him, I'm really sorry that I wish I could have, that I would have understood it more. But the problem is, he was already in the peak of his. Uh, the peak of his career in WWE, but now it's all gone. All he has to do is start from scratch, and we know he can pick it up again so elsewhere. And that, to me, it's something we can definitely enjoy. So I think right now, let's just end it right here and move on with GCW Maniac. Okie dokie, so let's talk about GCW Maniac, it took place also on the 21st of May, this one took at the Ukrainian Culture Center as well, uh, this one we had the opener, Blake Christian versus Kevin Blackwood, I have to say, what a great opener, you know, because the thing is, these two are one of the most fantastic wrestlers we've ever seen, but of course, we have one wrestler who's a bit of a, more of a technical aspect, one who has a bit of the high-flying aspect. That kind of helps out with the dynamics of the match. But it was Blake Christian who picked up the victory onto Blackwood. And I have to say, All Heart really is. All Heart with the 1, 2, 3. And it's over. He won the match. Next up, we got Titus O'Neil, who has been known as the franchise, taking on Tony Depp. And now this is a different thing. And also for the added bonus, we had Rick Knox actually refereeing this match um i did not expect that <coughs> but it was great to see him refereeing because you know everybody loves rick and not to mention now you would have assumed in every aspect tony deppin would do whatever it takes to win i mean look he's a fantastic wrestler but everybody we know in his character he's a total prick that's how it works titus on uh, alexander is no different but i don't think he met a guy like like him, but however, Tony Deppin did walk out as the victor. One, two, three. This is a huge disappointing loss for Titus Alexander. I'm like, man, they're both almost the same, but I think the bigger a hole in the story is Tony Deppin. That's why he won the match. Now, here's a very interesting match, and Vita Scott was put in the middle of this during commentary. Her fiance, Mike Bailey, taking on her friend, Masha Samovich. Now, this was one of those matches you probably would say, dang, this is one of those hard-hitting matches you definitely wouldn't expect. Now, Mike Bailey had uh, played out a pretty good role in this match, exploiting any potential weakness onto Slamovich. And I think that's played out pretty well until he finally put her away. One, two, three, it's over. I have to say it was a pretty good match. I think this is one of my favorite matches that I've seen in the intergender section. But I can't wait to see what else they can throw out in this one. So Bike Bailey won this one. Now we have the GCW Extreme title in a six-way scramble match. Well, originally it was supposed to be five. We have your effing with the different Boyd, Jimmy Lloyd, Cole Raderick, uh, Jack Cartwheel, <coughs> Ninja Mac, and then of course AJ Gray. But the surprise entrance was the return of Starboard. Charlie, we haven't seen him since he got injured. I was so happy to see him. I think many people did not anticipate this. But <coughs> but I also li did like how the commentators mentioned how Jack Cartwheel, who was in Japan recently uh, participating with Gleet, and so was Pro so was uh, Ninja Mac with Pro Wrestling Noah. I have to say, I commend them to acknowledge that's where they were the during their time. But it was great. But however, AJ Gray walked out as the victor once again, retaining the GCW Extreme Championship. So, wow. Next match, we have Biff Busick versus Jordan Oliver, Young, Dumb, and Broke. Wow. Another good match. I have to say, you know, because the thing is this. 
We know Biff Busick. He is one tough SOP. That's what I like about this match because it tells us, okay, here's this guy who's young, but he knows exactly what he's getting himself into. You're facing a guy who is there to beat the crap out of you. And somehow he was able to overcome all of it and pin Vic Busick. But at the same time, he gained respect. I would be surprised if Jordan Oliver learns the ways of what Bu Vic Busick is all about. Next up, we got Dark Sheik versus Luce Fisto. I have to say, another good match as well because I love everything they do on this, you know, because Dark Sheik is an amazing wrestler to watch, you know. Uh, she has that attitude, like, never say die, that type. And I think that's what makes her great, you know. Don't let the, let, don't let me fool you, but I won't die. So, but it was the, that amazing kick that put away Lufisto. And Dark Sheik won it with the one, two, three, and it's done. Now, our next match. This was supposed to happen about a month or two ago. Nick Wayne taking on Bandito. Another great match as well. I did not anticipate how good this match was going to be, but I have to say Nick Wayne really, really impressed me a whole lot. Despite the fact that he lost towards Bandito when he did that twenty, uh, that one finisher, but he was amazing. I have to say he really put up, went over on this match, despite the fact that he lost. And I think that's what's great about this match. So I enjoyed it as well. Now our next match we have is the GHC uh, the GCW um, tag team titles. We have Boosie, Effie and Alicatch taking on Togo Uso, uh, Juicy Finale, and Tao Leona. I thought this match was like David versus Goliath in this particular match. I did not anticipate how good it's going to look more like you made Boosie look like they're beating, getting their asses whooped by two of the largest individuals on the freaking planet. And I think that's pretty great. But Boosie can do anything if you believe in Boosie. I think that's how the story tells us. You know, here's a team that's a little weird. But believe in them. They can do what they want. Believe in them and they can get it done. And I think that's what happens. They picked up a stray, a great victory. Retaining the titles. And of course, uh, Tao Leona was leaving with a tear coming out. People would have said, cry me a river. Now, in main event, we have a death match. We have Joey Janela versus True Parker. Now, I want to put something out. What in the effing world was Joey Janela thinking? If you guys saw what he did, he lit his shoe on fire. Now, I want to know, as a fan, did he get this from Keno? If you guys know what I'm talking about, I'll explain it. Keno from Congo in Pro Wrestling Noah does this all the time. He recently lit up his shoe on fire to hit um, DDT's uh, damnation leader, uh, Daisuke Sazaki, and he actually did that. But he was unharmed. He was okay. He was literally put on fire. I don't know if this was a stupid idea or try to mimic what this guy did. I think it almost could have botched up. But no, they were able to contain the fire. I think they botched this one completely. But it was Drew Parker who picked up a very good vi victory when he spiked them. And then he put him right underneath a barbed bar wire door, landing on top of him. And one, two, three, it is over. I was like, I have to say that part with the shoe really, really threw me off. But the rest of it after that, great. So... I have to say, I liked it. It was pretty good. So, I think that's pretty much it with it. If I have to rate it, rate it, I give it an 8.5. So, that's how I picture it out. But, right now, let's just um, move on with AEW Dark Elevation. Okay, so let's talk about AEW Dark Elevation. Our opening match, we have Ethan Page along with Dan Lambert to take on this guy named J uh, J.D. Griffin who has a MMA, uh, Muay Thai MMA background. Now, you would have assumed that this was like unnecessary, but it kind of shows, you know, Ethan Page is being serious, trying to take things 
most likely. But of course, he did finish them off with the Eagles Edge, and it's over one, two, three. Now, uh, for the second week in a row, the ROH Undisputed Women's Championship was defended. Uh, Mercedes Martinez defended against Hyan. If you guys don't know who she is, uh, Hyan has been a well-respected wrestler. She has traveled around the world. I believe she was part of the reality of wrestling for a while. I think uh, I'm not 100% sure. But she did a pretty good fight. But however, it was that little submission that Mercedes Martinez is well known that sealed the deal for her to retain the title. And of course, she showed some respect to Hyan for the effort and being the match with her. Now, our next match we have is, of course, the Varsity Blondes without Julia Hart. We don't know what's going on, how they're going to play out the storyline after after what she's been through. They're taking on a, the AFO's um, Butcher and the Blade. Along here comes the Bunny. Now, the match was pretty interesting and uh, great. However, there was miscommunication from the Varsity Blondes that kind of put them in a position where it went in favor of the Butcher and the Blade until the Butcher put Griffin out with the somewhat of a power bomb and he pinned one two three it's over next up we got lee moriarty taking on alex reynolds now we would have assumed alex reynolds walks out but no i have to say lee moriarty who is a fantastic wrestler if you guys have never seen him before he is a great tactician wrestler you definitely can get behind but it was him with the cross face onto alex reynolds that allowed him to pick up a very good victory. Next up, we got Sky Blue and Yuka Sakasaki taking on Amy Sakura and Nyla Rose. Now, if Nyla Rose and Yuka Sakasaki has, has faced, and Amy Sakura has faced each other in the past, but now this is different. Now, um, there have been moments where, of course, Yuka Sakasaki was close to win, but no. But it, in this case, it was Sky Blue who ended up in the wrong side of the beast bomb. One, two, three. Nala Rose and Nami Sakura won the match. Now our main event, we have the Governor, Anthony Gogo taking on Mysterious Q. If you guys have never seen him, he's Texas native. I thought it was a good match. But once again, the left punch is what sealed the deal for Anthony Gogo to win with uh, <coughs> the count out. One, two, three, and it's over right from there. So, AW Dark Elevation was pretty good. Um, I know they can do better, but we'll see what happens in the following week. But right now, let's end it right here and move on with news updates. <laughs> Now, if you guys are a big fan of big giant dudes, you know, wrestling, such as Jonah and Jeff Cobb, if you guys saw this in New Japan, well, you're going to see more of it coming up at the next House of Glory show called Holy Grail on the 27th of May. If you guys are a fan of that, stay tuned if you guys haven't checked it out yet. So it's going to be for the World Heavyweight first round. So it looks like there's going to be a championship match taking place. So Jeff Cobb versus Jonah, let's call it. This is going to be a very interesting match to watch. Now, if you guys may or may not have heard of this story going on, um, Independent Wrestling Television, or IWTV, filed a lawsuit against GCW for a breach of contract. Now, if you guys have been noticed, GCW in the past used to have their streaming service to IWTV, but since December of 2020, all their shows have been uh, streamed by Fight TV. So it looks like they settled things out of court, and there's going to be an event that kind of put it back in the fold on July 10th. Now, it's the the pervious and details of that event is still unknown, but I'm kind of curious to know because I did not uh, anticipate a whole lot. But uh, the lawsuit did um, took place in 2021, but um, the air, but like I said, they air, uh, GCW aired their shows on Fight TV since December of 2020. So that's what's been going on. 
Uh, I'm glad that they managed to settle things. Not a whole lot has been told exactly what they're going to sell. But I will continue to follow more on this once things are becoming clear. So right now, I think that's pretty much it. So let's call it a day. Well, hope everybody enjoys this episode. Coming up, we got the Hana Kimura Bagus show. I'm excited for this. Last year was one of the most amazing shows ever. I had a lot of viewers, a lot of views in this particular one from last year. I hope we can make this one better and review what I thought about this, you know. And also, we will be doing day 7th of New Japan Pro Wrestling's Best of the Super Junior. So, stay tuned for that. But for now, I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang.